National Aeronautics and Space Administration presents Aeronautics and Space Report. Well, Skylab's going to be uh, America's first space station as such. We're going to be up there roughly eight months, and we're going to visit it three times during this eight months, and we're going to find out a lot about how to live in a space station, what we can do there. Meet astronaut Alan Bean, commander of the second Skylab space station crew. It will launch uh, at the end of April of 1973. The very next day, we'll send up a crew, three men, that will occupy Skylab for a month, well, 28 days, really. They'll return to Earth, and then about two months later, uh, the second crew will go up, and that's the crew that I happen to be on, Skylab 3 mission. We'll stay there 56 days or roughly two months. We'll return to Earth, and then the third crew will go up about a month later. So essentially, we're going to occupy it a total of five months out of eight months, beginning uh, the middle of 1973. And that's not very far away from right now. We asked astronaut Bean what it will be like to live and work inside the house-sized space station. We have uh, three bedrooms that we can live in. They're very small. The beds are on the wall as opposed to on the floor, but they're still ample in zero G. We can eat. Uh, on little trays similar to the ones you find on airplanes. We have to heat the food there, and we have to contain it or float away, but essentially we can live a lot more Earth-like than we could in the Apollo and Gemini programs. Skylab will orbit the globe every 93 minutes. From its 270-mile high vantage point, the astronauts can take a good look at the Earth's resources. We know that pollution is not just a problem in a small scale. Pollution that's in Los Angeles today will be in Phoenix day after tomorrow. Uh, it'll be in uh, Dallas, Texas the day after that. So what we hope to do is look down at the Earth with suitable sensors, let's say uh, infrared sensors, uh, microwave sensors, uh, various other frequency bands, including just visual cameras, and uh, l with this equipment, look at the Earth. Take this information, bring it back, and evaluate it using different electronic and photographic techniques. And from this data, uh, hopefully be able to look at crops and tell whether they're diseased or not, look at some and see if they need irrigation, look at some of the forests that we don't normally uh, get close to and see how they're doing, try to get a yield of, for example, the grass on rangeland, uh, determine the runoff that's going to happen at, due to spring uh, uh, thaws from the snows on the mountains, uh, find fish in the ocean, many things. We don't, we don't really know exactly all the things we can do right now with Earth resources because it's in its infancy. Beyond Earth, the crews of Skylab will look outward toward the sun since it affects the Earth in so many ways from weather to communications. Another major effort of Skylab is to make a close study of man himself in weightless space. Even the effects of zero gravity on human cells will be studied. We know we want to find out how man survives in space for long periods. We know there's a lot of jobs that can be done in Earth orbit to help man on Earth. And uh, what we've done is taken mostly uh, Apollo hardware, modified it as best we could, and with it we've come up with really a very uh, exceptional uh, space station that we hope is going to answer many questions that need to be answered now for uh, the future of space flight and also the future of, uh, of how we're going to use space to help the man in the streets. The Earth orbiting Skylab, this country's first way station in space. This has been an Aeronautics and Space Report presented by NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration.